So this video is going to be a little different. It's not exactly a step-by-step -step tutorial. It'll be more casual, like talking about my thought process as I go over recreating this scene. This image right here is actually the thumbnail for my lowest Patreon tier. I'm planning on launching my Patreon on October 1st. So if you like my videos and you want some extra goodies, or you just like to show your support, consider becoming a patron. I have a lot of stuff planned over there, like giving away a bunch of my Blender files, my paid products, allowing early video viewings, and I'm also dedicated to donating a portion of what I earn to organizations fighting for environmental protection, which is something that's important to me. So for my Patreon, I was thinking up like a little theme for each of the tiers and I ended up going with food theme. So I started trying to come up with some ideas uh, related to food in the first one. Since it's little, I was like, oh, it'll be a snack. So then I was thinking, you know, what kind of snacks uh, could I use for the image? You know, I could use like a cookie or something like that, but it felt a little too typical. You know, I could use candy or something like that or just an apple, but I wanted to think of something a little different so I ended up going with pickles just because I thought it was a little more weird a little more um, unique I guess so you can see here uh, I started with a pickle jar and I only put one pickle in it I thought it had a little more of a focal point with just one pickle in it once you fill it with pickles the focal point kind of just becomes the whole jar instead of the one pickle in the jar I feel like the composition is pretty basic it's I just put the focal point off to the side a little People talk about like the rule of thirds. I don't usually measure things too much. I used to do more precise measurements, but I kind of just do things uh, by sight now. I'll just move it until I think it looks good. Um, so that's what I did for this. And I have this other uh, pile of pickles right here with some brine on the floor right there. So I guess I'll start with the jar and how I made the jar. So the jar itself um, is actually pretty simple. It's, you know, it's really low poly. I'm just using a solidify to give it some thickness and the subdivision surface modifier is what's smoothing it out afterward. So yeah, there are a few extra loops uh, around the bottom just to tighten it up a little so it's not so smooth. You can see if I, without those, it would be a little smoother, quite a bit smoother right there. I did the same thing for around the mouth of the jar too. If I delete that, you can see it gets quite a bit smoother. Almost looks more like a flower pot, uh, like a vase, something like that. And I added this little like foot, I guess. I don't know what you would call it, but this ring at the bottom that a lot of jars have. Um, it's not the most noticeable thing in the final render, but I feel like it does add a little complexity to the reflections and things like that to have some extra shapes like that especially, you know, near the, the bottom of the jar and the top of the jar, instead of just looking like an orb or something like that. So the lid, uh, I also did a very similar thing where it's very low poly. As you can see right here, when I turn off, without all of the modifiers, it's very simple. It's actually not even closed. Um, I left the bottom open, just like I left the top of the jar open, and the solidify clears that up. You just have to be careful when you're using the solidify and shapes like this because if you turn it up too high, it'll start to go through itself like this. And you can see at a certain point, it'll kind of break like that. And, you know, it doesn't really look like a lid anymore at that point. I also put these rings in the top of the lid. I know a lot of lids for jars and things like that have little rings and, uh, you know, inset shapes and stuff like that. I made that before I figured out the camera angle. so. As you can see right here, the camera is pretty low. It's lower than the lid, and so you can't actually see the top. It's not really necessary to do that detail, and I would have saved myself a tiny amount of work if I figured out the camera angle first. So to get the liquid inside to uh, conform to the inside of the jar, I took the jar itself and I applied all of the modifiers. Um, and once you do that, it will allow you to select faces on the inside of the jar. And I basically just selected the middle faces in the bottom of the jar. And I just hit Control plus to expand the selection until the selection seemed like where I wanted the level of the liquid to be. So I didn't want to fill it to the very top. So once I did that, I just, um, you know, Shift D duplicated those faces and then separated them to a separate object. And then I, uh, I filled the top so it was actually a closed object. But the problem with this is that now it's inside out. So um, you can actually go up to viewport overlays and turn on face orientation. And when you do that, things that are blue are oriented the right way and things that are red are inside out. So if you see anything that's red when you're in there, you can just um, 
go into edit mode, select everything, hit F3 and search for flip. And you'll find flip normals and that will just make it the right way again. The pickle again was actually pretty easy to model um, because it's, it's mostly modifiers. So when I turn all of the modifiers off, it's basically just a cube with a few loop cuts in the middle um, that I stretched upward. So you can see with the subdivision surface modifier, it kind of smooths it out. And these loops right here just make the top a little more, um, instead of being very oblong, it kind of makes the ends a little more spherical. And then I added a simple deform to give it a slight bend right there. And this is nice because you can uh, affect it later to change how much you want it to bend. Then I added some displacement. The first level of displacement is just some clouds. As you can see in here, I just have a cloud texture. Um, and the size is pretty low and I turn the strength down pretty far too. Um, it doesn't add a whole lot, but it really changes the lighting um, quite, quite a bit just to add some texture. And then the last displacement is how I made all of those bumps. Um, and for that, I just use a Voronoi texture. And to make the bumps face the right way instead of going in, you just have to flip the color ramp around. And then I switched it to ease um, because if you have it set to linear, they end up being a little pointy. I guess next I should talk about shading. So the first thing I should mention is that I have um, a sort of infinite background set up right here. So the way I did that is I have this plane on the floor um, and it's literally, it's, it's just a normal plane. Um, I scaled it up quite a bit and then I applied the scale. Um, in here, we just have the regular principled BSDF shader and I'm mixing that with transparent. This right here is what it would look like if it was just using the principled shader. And as I turn it up, it becomes more transparent. So basically what I did was I used this length node. It basically checks to see how far away from the origin point everything is. So at the origin point, it'll have a value of zero and it just goes by real world scale. So like one meter away, it'll have a value of one. And then you can just use a map range to control that. So I just turned this up to 10 to change the value. So it has like a 10 meter radius now. You can use that to plug into the factor. And that will just make it so uh, the further away it gets, the more transparent it gets also. And that makes it kind of fade into the background eventually. You can see that it does get a little darker here. You could change that if you want by just moving this value in to something lower and it won't be as apparent now. But I had to set the background to be a similar color too. So under world right here, you can see I just use a light path and I plug the camera ray into the factor and then I have two backgrounds right here. So basically what this does is it allows you to have light from your HDRI um, be separate from what is shown. So visually it's gonna show this color right here, whatever color you set it to but all of the reflections will be from the HDRI that I'm using. And you can even change the strength separately and the background will still stay the same color, whether you have lighting in the HDRI or not, which is kind of cool. I could even turn this up if I wanted it to be more white, like actual white. And that would make the background look even more um, like flat, I guess. What's nice about this is you don't have as much of a seam in the background but you still get shadows right here. So the glass shader for the jar, instead of using the principal shader, I actually used a glass shader. Um, you can see right here, I'm mixing it with a translucent. So you can see when I'm using only the glass shader, it's really dark. That's just how it looks for some reason. And I was experimenting a little bit. Um, this isn't a trick that anybody showed me. I was just kind of messing around and seeing uh, maybe if I could mix it with something to make it brighter. And I found that adding just a tiny amount of translucency actually brightens it up. If I put it all the way up, you can't see through it. It just looks very frosty and um, like rough. You just can't see through it at all. So you only want to add a tiny bit, but you can see if I add a small amount like 0.05, it brightens it up quite a bit and you don't lose a whole lot of detail. It just kind of makes it lighter. So this divide node right here, it's basically just controlling a value, but making it so that I can turn it up in smaller increments. That's just a thing I like to do to be able to turn um, values up a lot slower. The lid, very, very basic. It's just a principled shader that I, uh, I made this reddish color and then turned the roughness down so it's pretty shiny. 
no surface imperfections or anything. I, f I figured, um, you know, I could add surface imperfections if I want to go for a more realistic look, but, you know, I I've never seen a jar this, like, round and bulbous. These pickles aren't photorealistic, so... Yeah, there is some realistic lighting and shading, but it's overall, it's a pretty stylized scene. So I wasn't going for realism necessarily. And if this is being used as like a thumbnail for Patreon, it's not going to be very big. So I don't have to worry about it too much. The pickle shader, I just have a principled BSDF shader right here. I left the roughness right in the middle. I found that if you make the roughness too low, it changes the color quite a bit. Um, and it just kind of makes the pickle look slimy and um, it might be more real realistic because these are supposed to be wet but I just didn't think it looked that good in the final render. I feel like that's more important than realism. Um, but I did want to add a little more shininess so instead of changing the roughness here I added a clear coat like that and left the roughness really low. The actual color of the pickle I wanted to add a little variety you can see that parts of the pickle are dark and the bumps are a little lighter. So the way I did that is I just used pointiness right here. Um, this only works in cycles as far as I know. And if I understand it correctly, it's kind of looking at um, slopes and pointy, you know, pointiness. Um, so things that are sharp, have sharp corners and edges will uh, be a different color. And then I just use a map range right here to crunch it together a little closer to get the values that I want. And then I used that uh, kind of like a mask for this mix RGB to switch between these two colors right here. So these are the colors that I'm plugging into the principled shader right there. I messed around with adding some subsurface scattering, but it just didn't really look right when I was, uh, when I was testing that out. So the liquid I played around with quite a bit, and you can see I did a very similar thing um, as I did with the jar. I used glass um, to get that refraction, and I used uh, a little bit of translucency so that it wouldn't be too dark. But in the end, I didn't end up really using it. You can see that I have this turned all the way down. So essentially, it's just a glass shader. Um, with no roughness and I just change the color. You know, if you turn it up you can see that it gets a little lighter, but the way I have the lighting set up it didn't make too much of a difference. I also messed around a little bit with adding some, um, some volume, some volumetrics, and I was kind of going for like, I, I kind of wanted to make it look like things were floating around in the jar, like it wasn't completely clear. Um, but when I went to render, it wasn't very noticeable, and it was just kind of adding noise to the render. Um, so I could have messed around a little more with that to have some things floating around. Or, I, you know, I also didn't have to use volume. I could have used particles or, you know, hand-placed little floating thingies in there. And that would have been fine too. I felt like it wasn't super important to the composition, so... I kind of just moved on after that. The only other thing in here is this splatter, which... Um, I made using my splatter generator from a previous video and instead of placing an image right here I actually used another mix shader right here and just brought in my splatter generator like this and I did go in and I modified it. This is something that I've updated already so that um, you can change the coordinate right here so I just change it to this uh, empty right here. Um, so the splatter will appear wherever this empty is, and you can see when I move it, the splatter moves too. So I just used the alpha right here as a mask to mix between the normal set and um, this right here, <laughs> which is... So it's just a principled shader that I added a little bit of transmission to to get uh, the color that I wanted. It makes it look kind of liquidy, but if you use just a little, it ends up kind of looking more like a puddle, I guess. It looks shallow, if that makes any sense. And then I turn the roughness all the way down because it is a liquid, you know, just wants it to look shiny. So I use the texture output of this right here. I use that for bump so that there's some like ripples going on right here. And yeah, that's how I, uh, how I made the splatter right here. Um, I kind of changed the shape a little and I just did that by moving this until it looked like a splatter that I wanted. You can just move it until it's a shape that you want basically. 
So yeah, if you're looking to do something similar, instead of placing an image with my splatter generator, um, I have updated it so that it has a few more options and fields. Um, and you can more easily place them around with an empty like this. So next I'll talk about lighting. So to do that, I'll just split this right here. So you can see through the camera while I'm moving the lights. Basically what I did for the lights is I added in this light target right here so that um, all of the lights are pointing towards it like that and you can just move it around um, that way for these area lights. They all have um, constraints on them that make them track this empty right here and it just makes it easier to move them around so when I move them I don't have to rotate them also like that. And the lighting setup is actually really simple. You can see for the world um, I have a very tiny amount uh, right here and that's basically just to add some reflections in the jar. You can see it looks like kind of like windows. When I turn it down all the way, the lighting won't change too much. It's just adding reflection detail, basically. And I have a few other lights, so let's take a look at those. I have this light up here, and this is just casting some shadow. Um, it's giving some very, uh, like a little amount of overall light um, across things. Um, especially like on the pickles right here and on the floor. I have this other light over here. Um, you can see I give it a slightly cooler color. I usually give some lights a cool color and other lights a warm color like that and it just kind of adds a little more, I don't know, complexity to the lighting that I think looks, looks nice. So yeah, this white light right here is kind of acting like a little bit of a rim light. So it's adding some light from this side. Um, and this side of the pickle also. And you can see when I have both of those, there are some light spots and some dark spots. That's usually what I go for, because if you just light it directly from the front, it kind of flattens things out. So I usually add something like a three-point light setup, um, where I have this light from the side, a little light from the top, and then I have a backlight right here. So yeah, you can see what that is doing is mostly lighting up the inside of the jar right there. Without the, this is what it looks like without the light in the back, and this is what it looks like with it on. So I had to move this around and experiment quite a bit until it was just in the perfect spot, because if you have it off even just a little, you don't really get the same effect. Um, so I had to really mess around with this until it was casting like a good silhouette so that the pickle was actually clear. Lighting is one of those things that I usually have one viewport that's looking through the camera and then I usually mess with the lights in a separate viewport like this. Um, and I have two monitors so I usually don't do it on the same screen like this. I'll have one of my monitors is always just looking through the camera and that's a setup that works for me but it works just as well on one monitor like this on one screen and it's a little easier in my opinion than uh, you know hopping back and forth moving a little and then looking through it and then moving a little and looking through it. If you just have these both set up already um, you don't have to you don't spend as much time hopping around. And something I always do with the camera and um, I talk about this in my camera tips video is I usually parent my camera to an empty and then to control it you can uh, just scale the empty up and down to zoom and you can rotate the empty to make it rotate around things, pivot around things. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I made it. Let me know if you like this style of video where I break down my process. I was planning on doing similar videos for other scenes that I've created. Once again, I'm planning on opening my Patreon on October 1st, where I'll be making a bunch of my Blender files available, giving away my paid products, and allowing early viewings of some videos like this. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.